Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tutorials and welcome to Weekly Svelte, which is a video series that we do here once a week, as the name implies, where we talk about Svelte topics. And in this one, we're going to be sharing five packages and projects that we think you should know about for Svelte. Now, this first one here is from the man Swix. And what he did is he put together a neat little starter kit. This is a, uh, a Svelte Svelte kit kit. So it's a Svelte Svelte kit kit. It's a Svelte kit with Tailwind and Netlify to get a blog going. And this thing has some neat little novel things involved in here, especially for developers who are looking to host their own blog rather than, uh, you know, have it on a service or something. Now this thing is opinionated, which is great. I love opinionated things. You have to make less decisions. I personally write a lot of opinionated packages myself. And it even has a light and a a light and a dark mode theme. I, my face there just uh, lit up. So this thing's really neat. I'm going to talk just briefly about it here. You can see if we click through the blog, there's a lot of neat little features here, um, whether or not it's for blog posts. Um, one of the cool things is that there's reactions in here. I'm going to show you how he did this. So you can even have reactions in here. And I'll, I'll dive into the source just ever so slightly. Um, so this thing has a lot of neat features, including an RSS feed, which I do actually want to show you his RSS feed. Let's actually go into the code for the RSS feed really quick, because I, I recently wrote an RSS feed myself and he chose to do it a little bit differently. And I just want to highlight this. So he's using an RSS package and it's basically just creating the RSS feed, which is really nice actually, because Honestly, the way that Level Up Tutorials did our RSS feed was just like shoving things into a string with string interpolation and then joining the paths. I don't know. This works, but this is way, way, uh, way less secure. Maybe not like security wise, but like this is less. Mine is, is more breakable than his. So uh, I might just re-implement what he's doing here. It's pretty neat. Um, also, there is uh some caching by default we have a max age cache going on in here for each individual blog post it's cached to a minute and it's it's actually he says hydrate is false in the dem or in the uh, docs but it says it's temporarily turned off temporarily disabled until we figure out hydration either way a uh, hydration is turned off for the about page hydration being turned off means that there's no client side javascript to reload on your page thus making your page loads faster which is nice there's some security headers via netlify.toml which is great if you're hosting on netlify there's some neat little ux touches like uh, top level blog urls like my blog uh, a neat little post explaining why comments are, are are rendered and sanitized. Now, how are comments done? There's no database here. This is actually one of the neatest things about this. Again, this doesn't work for this isn't going to work for, you know, your employer's blog. But for a developer blog, this works really well because most developers have GitHub, GitHub, not GitHub. That would be kind of cool, too. Um, so how is this being done? Well, it's being done through GitHub issues. Here's a closed GitHub issue, which probably means that it's published and it's written in Markdown with images and everything like that. It would be hosted on GitHub and check it out. There's reactions and even comments. This is so cool. Exclamation point comment, leave that comment. And that has been published. Now I believe this <laughs> we'll, we'll see if this is actually published actually, sorry, let's see if this is actually published on the, the real site right now. I don't know how he has this set up, but the leave a comment probably oh, it works. That's so cool. I mean, I, I wasn't just reading the comment. It is really that cool. And you can leave reactions the same way. Either way, uh, this is fun that this comment just exists here. Okay. So this is the, um, the Swix blog kit. You can read more about it here. Here. And one little quick thing I wanted to talk about is that because he has caching set up, a lot of people don't realize this, but in SvelteKit, you can cache your routes and you can cache them via, let's find it, the max age return. Sorry, I'm just like clicking around. You can return a max age here. And this will cache this. Now this is being done in seconds. So 60 seconds is obviously one minute. If you're the type of person who hates doing math, I have made 
a max age calculator for you. And this is a little side note, and I'm getting like white blasted in my face right now, but check this thing out. Um, neat little thing. Yeah, you can adjust all of these. They're max, min, whatever. And it'll just give you the calculations in seconds. So you're going to say, hey, I want to cache this page for 60 minutes, which is obviously 60 times 60 gives us this. Um, we want to cache it for a couple hours, whatever. And if you want to check out the source behind it, hey, it's written in Svelte. I did it kind of very quickly, so don't judge me on this thing. I I, I did it while I was watching t uh, Next Level Chef, which is appropriately titled cooking show based on level up tutorials. So Next Level Chef, shout out to that show, um, watching that, making this thing, making a max age calculator because I hate doing this math every time. So I'll, I'll put the link in the description for this below. This is just a little extra. So we have the Swix kit. He is calling it the Swix kit. Yes, I didn't just make that up. The Swix kit, nice little fun blog starter. Okay, next up is going to be Svelte Adapter Dino. Now, Svelte Adapter Dino is for those of you who like to use Dino and have been wanting a nice front-end framework to use along with it. Now, this allows you to deploy a Svelte Kit application into Dino. Now, if you don't know about Dino, it's a alternative to Node.js that has some different features. It's more secure by default. It doesn't access things like the file system without you telling it that it can do that. You have to pass it in certain security parameters. There's also a lot of differences as in um, your packages are done via URLs rather than via a package.json. Now what's neat about this is that you have an adapter to deploy directly onto Dino rather than Node and you can choose the output directory and even specify a depths.ts. Now, depths.ts is a uh, a way that Dino applications kind of manage their dependencies because there's no package.json, right? Uh, you end up having a TypeScript file where you import and re-export. It's a, it's a thing that they do. It's not my favorite um, paradigm, but hey, it works. And you can pass it in, as you can see, allow env, allow read, allow net, those types of things. Again, making this a little bit more secure by default. So if you are a Dino user and you would like to use a neat front end framework, uh, yeah, I would pick Svelte Kit and I would pick Svelte Adapter Dino. It's really neat. So next is going to be jQuery. Now jQuery is a library that I wrote myself. It's what we use on Level Up Tutorials to do all of our data fetching. And this is a, it's a minimal GraphQL library that leans heavily on code generation. Now, the cool thing about jQuery is you create a client and then you pass in some configuration to a Vite plugin. Now this Vite plugin is made especially for Svelte Kit. So this is a Svelte Kit specific Vite plugin that not only uh, takes care of getting your, your files generated for you, but it also handles reloading and choosing when to run that generation and deleting old files. And so it's, it's really pretty neat. It's all wrapped up into a single code gen. We don't have to add anything separately. We don't have to run anything separately. It just works. Um, you pass it in a schema. You tell it where you want your TypeScript types to go because this thing is very TypeScript forward. And then we have a G path, which is the path to the client that we created up here. And then that's it. From there, you just create a GraphQL file like current user. And what that does is it's going to spit out a file name or a a, so if this was user queries.graphql, it will spit out a user queries.gq.ts see user queries.gq.ts that includes a function get current user, which you can run in your load function. You pass in fetch and then you get access to a store. Sorry, this, this example uh, needs quick updating. This one is up to date here. And so you can see we run get current user in the load function, and then we have a subscription available to us as current user, which is fantastic because we have this all available to us for SSR, as in it's effortless SSR GraphQL data, all done via Svelte writable stores, meaning that you can modify and update these things effortlessly. And that actually comes into play with some dev tools that I wrote too. It even works with mutations. Uh, however, it doesn't work yet with subscriptions. Again, we're using this in production, but our use case is somewhat more narrow than other people's. So uh, I 
part of the the intention of making this thing open source at this point is that if you're using this for anything other than uh, just basic queries and mutations, maybe we can get those use cases in and actually have a, a means to try and test that. But you can see it just creates a function like make admin user, you call it, it returns some data, you can actually take that data and then reapply it to your store if you want, or you can do optimistic UI by hand, it does not matter. And the main, the main meat of this library is 114 lines of code. That's right, 114 lines of code. So this thing is tiny. We also have dev tools. Believe it or not, the dev tools are fantastic. And I'll show you how those work in just a second here on the Level Up Tutorials dev site. So uh, these are the dev tools over here. You click on the little thing and it shows you all of the active uh, GraphQL subscriptions that are available, not GraphQL, so Svelte writable stores. So these are all the, the active Svelte writable stores. Let's say we have the active tutorial here. You can check it out. Uh, watch this. Hello, and you can see down there it's updating live because why? Because this is a Svelte writable store and this is a Svelte writable store. They're the same store. And guess what? These dev tools are available to you for free, for free, obviously, but for free in terms of to, to do that, all you do is copy and paste this file right here. What this is doing here is it's running a get stores function that goes and collects all of our stores. And we use the import meta glob eager from Vite, which is just amazing that it can find all of the gq.ts files, parse them into stores, and then pass them into the Svelte toy package, which I made, which allows you to modify uh, various um, Svelte writables. It's very cool. And then you can just drop that in. And we do this like if is development show dev tools. So cool. So give this library a try. We have some uh, contribution information in here if you want to help work on it. Um, we also have an example repo if you want to see how this thing actually looks when you use it. It's fun. We use it in production ourselves, and I would love for you to give it a try. All right, next one is going to be tiny virtual list. Now, virtualizing a list is something that could be exceedingly important if you're dealing with a lot of data and a big list. Now, what virtualization does is let's say you have an, a list with three thousand items in it and you're showing the user four or five at a time do you need to render and keep track of all three thousand of those things no you only need to keep track of a subset of them that the user is looking at this is a technique that's extremely utilized in video games right where it's only rendering things that the character is looking at or maybe even in native applications to give that smooth scrolling so virtualizing a list is nothing new in the terms of programming so it's really great to have this available in svelte in a nice simple package called svelte tiny virtual list now, I haven't used this library myself, but it is amazing and the demo is very convincing. So if you want to give this thing a try, it looks really super neat. And honestly, I, I've used some React virtual list libraries before, and this one uh, is a lot easier than that. I'll tell you that. Uh, the, the syntax for this is, is actually pretty amazing, and it even works well with infinite loading. So if you have big lists of data and you want to make sure they're performant, check out so Svelte Tiny Virtual List, uh, tiny independency free, gotta love it, right? Um, there's such, a, such an emphasis on small packages in the Svelte world where you're saying, hey, we're, we're shipping no code, let's keep this thing small. We, we don't need to overblow this with JavaScript to do a whole ton of really minor things. Honestly, things that should be baked into the browser in the first place, if you're asking me. All right, next one is going to be Svelte notifications. And let's just say this thing is super, super cool. Okay, we're gonna create this. You can see that you can have some actions or close. These can be really intense notifications, or you can have these really basic ones. You can choose their positioning. Actually, let me bump up the font size of the, or the zoom in size of this. So you can see super cool. We can say, oh no, wait, we actually want you to be in the bottom right. Oh no, we want you to be red. And there's more options than just that, because this thing allows you to do default success, warning, danger, allows you to change the position, change the ID. It's very simple. You're just calling a function, add notification, giving it its position, heading, type, description, all that and more. Check it out. Svelte notifications. This is going to be one that you're going to want to check out because honestly, most people have to write this bit of functionality. In fact, we, we rewrote this bit of functionality ourselves in Level Up Tutorials. I don't even know if I can um, 
let's see if I can uh, pop open one of these without revealing my home address <laughs> because I very well may have my home address on this site. Let's see. Um, this is development version of the site, so that's why it's buggy and or slow. Let's see, my profile. Here we go. My home address is not here. I click save. This is the, this is the one that we made. Honestly, theirs is better. This this one's very nice. Don't get me wrong. This one's very nice. But um, theirs has more options. So if most people have to write this piece of functionality, and if I would have known about this package, uh, we probably wouldn't have written our own. That's for sure. So these are five awesome packages and one little extra that you can check out if you're a Svelte user. So to reiterate, we have the Swix kit, which is a really awesome opinionated blog starter from Swix. We have the adapter Dino, if you're looking to publish your application to Dino. We have jQuery, which is a tiny GraphQL co-generated focused GraphQL library for Svelte Kit, specifically for Svelte Kit. We have a tiny virtual listing library that allows you to do virtualized lists. We have Svelte notifications, which allows you to do some really great notifications. And as a little extra added bonus, we have a max age calculator that I threw together in one evening while watching TV. Now, uh, that is to say, if you want to learn all this and more, head on over to leveluptutorials.com where we have tons and tons Tons and tons of content available for you. In fact, the latest course out right now is Remix for Everyone. Now, Remix is currently a React-based platform. However, you know, that might change. So give Remix a try. If, if those of you are maybe you're still stuck on React and you haven't moved over to the Svelte world just yet, uh, I would choose Remix if I were you. And if you are uh, just interested in, in gaining more experience in really, really neat libraries, give Remix for everyone a try. Otherwise, we have a course on Svelte Kit, accessibility for everyone, building Svelte components, Astro for everyone, e-commerce on the Jamstack with Colby Fayok. I should say accessibility for everyone is from the awesome Amy Kaepernick, uh, modern GraphQL databases with Prisma from Ryan Alinska, web components for beginners if you're interested in web components, code automation with GitHub from Brian Douglas, modern CSS design design systems, so many courses on this site. I could keep scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. Um, and we have a new course out every single month. So if you want to get a new course every month uh, delivered to you as a subscriber, head over to leveluptutorials.com. And it would mean a ton to me because we're a small business and you know we work really hard to produce these courses and these content creators work really hard to make them. So head on over to leveluptutorials.com forward slash pro sign up to become a pro today and if you sign up before march of 2022 here uh you'll be locked into this current price forever before we upgrade our prices it's been a couple of years since the last price increase and we've really added a ton of content so um you know what the the prices will be going up slightly in march however if you want to get in right now now is the perfect time to sign up for the year and we have team accounts. So if you want to sign up your whole team, get your team on board, um, get your team on board and you can get that price for your entire team and lock it in right now before that price goes up. It's really an awesome thing to invest in your team's production and your team's knowledge. So head on over to leveluptutorials.com and sign up today. And if you're looking for a podcast in your life, check out syntax.fm. If you have not heard of us, we are the most popular web development podcast in the world. Yeah. Uh, and this is Wes Boss and I. We talk about all sorts of cool stuff on this podcast. The latest episode is what to focus on for beginner, intermediate, and advanced web developers in the year 2022. And it was a lot of fun. We do two episodes a week. And I like to think that we make teaching web development approachable. And we just like to have fun and talk about it in a way that is is positive. And we both work really hard on this thing. So syntax.fm. Thanks so much for watching. And I will see you next week for Weekly Svelte.